The movie begins by showing this young girl named Xu Jing Jing, and her story begins with her being super determined to tell her crush, Go Zhan, how she felt about him. Everything seemed perfect for her big moment, but fate had other ideas. Right when she was about to pour her heart out, a bunch of basketballs started falling from the sky, one after the other. But don't worry, her luck wasn't really taking a dive, it was all just a dream. Those basketballs magically turned into her mom's loud wake-up calls, telling her it's time for school. Jing Jing was so close to being late, that her mom discovered that Jing Jing had been up all night making cute little emoticons. But Jing Jing didn't give in. She told her mom that if they ever had a face-off, her mom wouldn't stand a chance. Meanwhile, Jing Jing's dad was busy planning a wedding. And as you might have guessed, when it came to a battle of wits, Jing Jing was no match for her mom. A little later, when Jing Jing was getting ready for school, her mom reminded her about her upcoming math test results. Nervously, she asked if she passed. Trying to be smart like her dad, she avoided the question and then rushed off without even having breakfast, leaving her mom all confused. As Jing Jing headed to school, something really surprising happened. A kind-hearted person saw her cute emoticon creations, which she called Pippi, and offered her a donation. She happily accepted this unexpected act of kindness with a warm smile. While she was on her way, she came across a small food stall run by a man who was clumsily gluing his sign. Her tummy rumbled, and she really wanted a fried pancake. But to her disappointment, they were all sold out. Her only choice was a dish that would take a long 10 minutes to make. Then she noticed a boy with glasses sitting nearby. She gathered up her courage and wanted to ask him for a plate of buns. But the boy seemed unsure, even when Jing Jing offered to pay him. Realizing he wouldn't give her what she wanted, she decided to leave. But as she got up from her seat, the boy tried to follow her, but he ended up falling from his chair. Without thinking, Jing Jing reached out to stop him from falling, but they got stuck together because of the stubborn glue on the ground. Now, they had no choice but to walk around the school grounds very closely, which was super embarrassing. At first, the boy acted like it was no big deal, but he started to worry when he realized his pants might tear. Their classmates couldn't help but whisper and giggle at them, turning their day into an unexpected adventure. As the boy kindly shared some of his food with Jing Jing, her curiosity got the best of her. She asked him about his school, and to her surprise, he told her they went to the same school. Jing Jing couldn't believe it. She had never seen him before. But her heart sank even more when she saw Gao Zhan coming on his bicycle. Panic set in, and she tried to hide to avoid being seen. But all of her efforts were in vain because Gao Zhan eventually came over to them. He had an awkward smile and told them about some spare uniforms in the schoolroom, not realizing their strange situation. Blushing with embarrassment, Jing Jing quietly told the boy that he seemed to be bringing bad luck. Later on, they shuffled their way to the supply room, determined to get help from their teacher. The teacher couldn't help but chuckle, because he had never seen anything like this before. Luckily for Jing Jing, they had pants in her size, but the boy needed a size 70, which was a special order. Just as they were wondering what to do next, a girl walked in and suggested that the basketball club might have pants in his size. She generously gave him a pair, and as they introduced themselves, Jing Jing found out that the girl had the same name, Xu Jing Jing. To avoid any confusion, we will call her Xu. As they found out they shared the same name, the boy tried to start a conversation with Jing Jing, but she just asked him to move aside. They headed to the classroom, and there Jing Jing met up with her friends. She told them about the embarrassing situation she went through and how she felt ashamed with goes on and Xu seeing her all stuck with the glue. Jing Jing's friends gave her some advice. They reminded her that she often complained about not being close to Gojan, even though they'd only talked about 10 times since 10th grade, mostly about school stuff. They encouraged her to take a small step, to prove to herself that she could do it. With all her courage, Jing Jing stood up and went to Gojan, feeling really nervous. She thanked him for helping her earlier. Just when things were starting to calm down in the room, the teacher came in with some news. There was a new student, and it was the same boy Jing Jing had met earlier, Kan Jiu Wei. He introduced himself to the class and couldn't help but notice Xu. He kept looking at her. Then the teacher told everyone to switch seats. Xu, who had a secret crush on Go Zhan, hoped she could sit next to him. But her hopes were crushed when he said no, and they chose different seats. As most of the students had already found their seats, a boy named Ni Da Peng wanted to sit next to Jing Jing. He tried to convince her, but she said no. However, the teacher called him over before he needed Jing Jing's help. 
Now, the only ones left to enter the classroom were Jing Jing and Jiu Wei. They ended up sitting together. The teacher mentioned that Jiu Wei had done really well in his previous school, where he ranked first. The teacher said that Jiu Wei had to sit next to the student with the lowest grades in the class. Since many students were struggling with their grades, the class average was 8th place. Everyone looked at Jing Jing, who, as expected, had not done well on the math test. But surprisingly, Jiu Wei spoke up and told everyone that Jing Jing had done great on the English test, and there was a mistake in her math grade. This cleared up the confusion, and Jing Jing's English grade got better. Just like that, Jing Jing wasn't the lowest ranked student in the class anymore. That title went to Da Peng. Jing Jing was so happy about this unexpected win. She was grateful to Jiu Wei for helping her, and thought he was really smart. She had no problem sitting next to him now. Shortly after that, Jing Jing gathered the courage to ask Jiu Wei for a favor. She wanted to copy his homework, but offered something in return, not money, but pippy emoticons that she had signed herself. Jiu Wei agreed to the deal. While they were in class, Jiu Wei noticed something interesting. Jing Jing had cleverly placed a mirror to sneak a peek at Go Zhan without anyone noticing. When lunchtime came and Jiu Wei looked at Xu, she came over to talk to him. They started chatting and Jiu Wei got curious when he saw Xu wearing an armband. He started wondering if she was the person he had heard about. Xu mentioned an upcoming basketball game against Class 6, so Jiu Wei asked if she liked guys who played basketball. Xu replied with a playful smile, saying that all the girls did, and she mentioned she was part of the cheerleading squad. Meanwhile, over at the Taekwondo club, Jing Jing was so excited. She accidentally bumped into her clubmate, Lu Xiaobai, because she was eager to go to the basketball game. Xiaobai thought about quitting, but then she realized it would mean the club would have to shut down. Jing Jing accepted her apology, and Xiaobai reassured her that it was just a joke. Jing Jing couldn't wait to sneak out and watch the basketball game. Her plan was to give Gaoshan a heartfelt letter expressing her feelings and a special drink made by her mom. As the day went on, Jing Jing had to deal with a 10-question math test, along with a few other students. While taking the test, she decided it was the perfect time to put her plan into action. She thought she could sneak away without anyone noticing. But her bold move didn't escape the sharp-eyed teacher who caught her in the act. Meanwhile, Jiu Wei went back home and enjoyed some tasty fried chicken before starting on his own quest. He couldn't stop thinking about the bracelet Xu had been wearing and his strong feeling that he somehow knew her. It turned out they had a connection, but it was in the virtual world. What Xu didn't know was that Jiu Wei was quite different from what she might have imagined. He was an overweight guy. On the other hand, Jiu Wei had never known Xu's true identity until now. In his daydreams, he imagined himself as a different, more idealized version, having a deep conversation with her and indirectly expressing his love. In reality, Jiu Wei was full of excitement and was determined to impress Xu. The next day, fate brought Jiu Wei and Jing Jing together once again. They had a meal together, and Jiu Wei's newfound kindness surprised Jing Jing. In their conversation, he found out that she was really good at Photoshop, and he saw an opportunity to ask for her help with something important. Meanwhile, Go Zhan and his basketball teammates were worried about not having enough players for an upcoming game. To their surprise, Jiu Wei showed up in front of Go Zhan, offering a basketball resume that had been expertly photoshopped by none other than Jing Jing. As amazing as it might sound, just looking good on the basketball court wasn't enough for Go Zhan. He knew that for Jiu Wei to truly prove his skills, he had to show them on the court. The solution is a one-on-one -on -one basketball showdown between Jiu Wei and Go Zhan. Moments later, everyone watched in amazement as Jiu Wei won the match, leaving no doubt that Go Zhan wanted him on the team. But this wasn't a free pass, they had an agreement. While the basketball game was about to start, Jing Jing found herself stuck in an exam. This was the part of the deal that helped Jiu Wei. He had promised to help her with the exam, and he did it really quickly, so Jing Jing could finish on time. She rushed to her mom's shop, where she prepared a special drink she planned to give to Go Zhan. When Jing Jing got to the game, it had already started. Her friends pointed out that she now had a rival, and it was clear because she was looking at Go Zhan in a special way. During halftime, Jing Jing hurried down to the court to give her carefully prepared drink to Go Zhan. But right at that moment, she showed up with a fresh, tempting drink for him too. In the end, Go Zhan made a choice. He picked Jing Jing's drink. The basketball game resumed, but something strange started happening to Go Zhan. It was clear that something was wrong and had nothing to do with love. In reality, the drink Jing Jing had given him made him sick, and he had to leave the game. 
That's when Zhou Wei took his place, all determined to catch Xu's attention. With Zhou Wei on the court, the class team managed to catch up in the game. And then it all came down to a really important moment. And Zhou Wei was thinking about Xu. Jing Jing was cheering him on, which fueled his determination. He made his move to take the shot, but an opponent blocked it. Sadly, his shot accidentally hit Jing Jing, and their team lost. Everything had gone wrong. Their good intentions had turned into a big mess. Wincing in pain, Jing Jing had to leave the basketball game, and her friends went with her. They were worried and asked her what kind of drink she had given Gao Zhan. She told them it was his absolute favorite. Later, Jing Jing realized something really important was wrong. She didn't have the love letter she had carefully planned to give Gao Zhan. When she got back home, her lack of appetite raised suspicions with her parents. They felt like something was wrong and wanted to help. Her mom got curious and asked her how she had done with the dietary fiber powder drink, which is known for helping with constipation. All of a sudden, it made sense. Go Zhan's discomfort after drinking it. The next day, Jing Jing tried to avoid Go Zhan because she was embarrassed, but he came up to her. To her relief, he wasn't mad about what had happened. He understood that Jing Jing didn't mean to hurt anyone. This made Jing Jing feel better, and as to the lost letter, she told him she could write another one. Inside the classroom, some students blamed Jiu Wei for losing the basketball game. It turned out that the letter Jing Jing had written for Go Zhan ended up in Jiu Wei's notebook. Some students took it from him and planned to embarrass him, thinking it was a love letter from Jing Jing. Jing Jing went into the classroom and tried to get the letter back, even pushing one of the students, but teacher Tian, who was watching, stepped in. So Jing Jing was called to the teacher's room for a talk. To protect herself, Jing Jing lied and said that the letter was written by Xu. But her lie didn't work because teacher Tian knew Xu's handwriting was different. Suspicion grew as the teacher asked more questions and wanted to know who the letter was meant for. Jing Jing, trying to divert suspicion away from Gao Zhan, made up a story and said the letter was for Jiu Wei. After Jing Jing left, another teacher went to teacher Tian and expressed concerns about Jing Jing's school performance and her involvement in various matters. This teacher believed that Jing Jing shouldn't waste her time on love stuff. The teacher thought teacher Tian should look into it, even though it was a private matter between students. Back at the Taekwondo club, Jing Jing was really frustrated, and her friends had to step in to calm her down. She was really curious about who put the letter on Jiu Wei's desk. While they were talking about it, they saw Jiu Wei watching from outside the room. Later, teacher Tian asked Jing Jing to come for a talk by herself. After reading the letter carefully, teacher Tian started to doubt if Jiu Wei was really the one it was meant for. Many things in the letter just didn't make sense, and it was getting more confusing and intriguing. In a critical moment, Jiu Wei stepped in to save the situation and gave a reasonable explanation for the mysterious letter. He started by telling Teacher Tian that he and Jing Jing had known each other since high school and Jing Jing played along with it. Then, Jiu Wei added a twist to the story. He acted surprised and said he didn't expect Jing Jing to still have feelings for him. He reassured Teacher Tian that he wasn't in love with her. This clever trick was meant to protect Jing Jing from more questions and all she had to do was some self-reflection for the next day. The next morning, as Jing Jing was rushing to school, she ran a red traffic light. To make up for her mistake and avoid getting in trouble, she stayed at the intersection for a while, making sure pedestrians could cross safely. It didn't take long for Zhou Wei to show up, teasing her and taking pictures, but he ended up breaking the same traffic rule, so he had to wait there with her. During this unusual encounter, Jing Jing couldn't help but ask Zhou Wei about what he did the day before. He explained that he did it to help her, to keep her feelings for Gao Zhan a secret. He was being supportive and trying to protect her. Jing Jing was really bothered by the mystery of the letter on Zhao Wei's desk, and she was determined to find out the truth. As the class started, Teacher Tian asked Jing Jing to come to the front. She had to read aloud a self-reflection she had written, which was meant to remind everyone to focus on their studies. But just as Jing Jing was about to start reading, Zhao Wei stepped in. He said it wasn't right to share Jing Jing's personal thoughts with everyone, and Jing Jing agreed. Jing Jing's friends joined in, protesting and saying that Jing Jing's privacy should be respected. With all this pressure, the teacher changed her mind and let Jing Jing go back to her seat without having to share her self-reflection with the whole class. After Jing Jing left the room, teacher Tian talked to another teacher who had seen what happened. He criticized her for letting the students have so much control. Teacher Tian was unsure if she had done the right thing, 
and the other teacher asked why she was a teacher if she couldn't make these decisions confidently. He was sad that the relationship between teachers and students seemed to be getting worse each year. Still feeling frustrated, Teacher Tian decided to go to the Taekwondo Club event. There she met a wise man who had heard her talking about her problems. He gave her some simple but meaningful advice. She should listen to her heart and not let others control her decisions. During lunch, Jing Jing sat next to Gojon, hoping he could help her figure out the mystery of the letter on Zhou Wei's desk. At first, Gojon thought the letter was for Zhou Wei, but Jing Jing strongly disagreed. She promised to explain everything later and asked for his help, saying he was smart. However, Gojan didn't want to get involved in her game of cat and mouse and said no. Zhou Wei was confused why Jing Jing asked Gojan for help. So she told him that Gojan had helped catch a thief the year before, even before the police did. Later, Jing Jing's friends joined the conversation, and they talked about what might have happened to the letter. Jing Jing praised them for their great ideas, and it made Shan burst into laughter. Later, Gojian came up to Zhou Wei and Jing Jing, this time genuinely wanting to help. He suggested they try to get the letter back and search for any clues to find out who took it. Gojian was willing to help in the investigation, but he didn't have much time because he had to go home with Xu. This made Zhou Wei a little jealous, and he wondered if something was going on between Gojian and Xu. But Jing Jing didn't think there was anything to worry about. Jing Jing wanted to help with the investigation but she had an upcoming exam with Teacher Zhang. While the exam was going on, Teacher Zhang talked to the students. Meanwhile, Zhou Wei and Go Zhang were patiently waiting for the right moment to sneak into the teacher's room. They had to be quick before Teacher Zhang came back. Once they got in, they put on gloves and started looking for clues. In the exam room, Teacher Zhang was getting ready to leave. Jing Jing tried to delay him and almost succeeded, but Da Pong messed up her plans. Teacher Zhang was on his way to his office, so Zhou Wei and Go Zhan had to move fast. They got the letter and started searching for clues. They found something surprising, gold dust inside the letter. By the time Teacher Zhang came back, their investigation was done, and they had some new information and a mysterious puzzle to solve. Go Zhan rushed back to walk home with Xu, which surprised her. She asked him why he suddenly wanted to walk with her, and he honestly said he was worried about her walking alone. Xu then asked him why he chose Jing Jing's drink at the basketball game instead of hers. Go Zhan said it was because he liked that drink better. Xu told him she didn't need company on Fridays because she had other plans. As evening came, Jing Jing and Zhou Wei talked about what they found when they checked the mysterious letter. But their conversation went in an unexpected direction when Zhou Wei started asking Jing Jing about Go Zhan and Xu's relationship. Jing Jing got frustrated and ended the call. The next day, Jing Jing got her exam grade, and it was not good at all. Teacher Zhang scolded her and said with grades like that, she couldn't stay at any club, especially not be the president of the Taekwondo club. Jing Jing reluctantly agreed to step down until her grades got better. She told her friends, and it was a heavy decision that hung over the future of their club. The club was in a tough spot. They needed a good president, but none of the candidates were suitable. But they had a small hope. Someone with a black belt could save the club. Jing Jing thought about it and decided to ask Gao Zhan for help. At first, he said no, not interested in any club. Then, Jing Jing surprised him. She revealed that she also had a black belt from her father's training. This surprising news led to an unexpected challenge. Jing Jing suggested they have a fight. If she won, Gao Zhan would become the club president. The idea of this fight hung in the air, making things tense between them. Jing Jing started training for the fight and someone recorded her efforts on camera. She was worried and told Jing Jing not to fight Go Zhan, saying it wasn't ladder like In the end, Jing Jing decided not to go through with the fight, but Zhou Wei encouraged her to face Go Zhan. He teased her about washing her feet first so she wouldn't smell bad when she kicked him. This made Jing Jing kick him in anger. During this moment, Zhou Wei noticed something interesting, a bracelet on Jing Jing's leg, just like the one Xu had. This made him wonder if he had been talking to Jing Jing online instead of Xu all this time. Zhou Wei and his father had dinner together and talked about how they moved a lot. Zhou Wei told his father that he was okay with it. Then a package that looked like a PAX device arrived for Ken, and they were curious about it. The next day at school, Zhou Wei asked Jing Jing about her fight preparations. He tried to figure out if she was the person he had been talking to online. But Jing Jing told him she didn't use that social network and preferred Weibo. Zhou Wei smiled, 
now sure that the person he was talking to online was Xu. As the fight in the students' arena got closer, Gojian told Xu he wanted to end it quickly so he could walk her home. Meanwhile, Jing Jing was getting ready for the fight, but Gojian went to check something. With only 30 minutes left before the fight, things were tense, and they didn't know who would win. Xu chose not to watch the fight and went to do something else. Zhou Wei got curious and followed her. She went to dance, a secret hobby she didn't tell anyone about, not even her mother. What she didn't know was that someone was secretly recording her, like a stalker. Zhou Wei realized something was wrong and tried to stop the stalker. But in the fight that followed, he got hurt. Meanwhile, Gou Zhan was getting ready for the fight. Just when he was about to enter the ring, Xu called him and told him about the scary situation. He rushed to her, but it was too late. The stalker had already gone, and Zhou Wei was hurt. Gou Zhan scolded Xu, saying she should have told him about her plans so he could have been with her. Actually, Gou Zhan knew about Xu's problem with stalkers, and that's why he always wanted to be with her. But he hadn't told her earlier because he didn't want her to worry. Now he understood how serious it was. Xu loved dancing, but she kept it a secret even from her mother. She was determined to avoid getting the police involved because it could reveal her hidden passion to her mother. Picking up where we left off, Jing Jing's friends celebrated her victory, saying that Gou Zhan had left, so the win was rightfully hers. But despite their encouragement, she still felt down and decided to go outside in the pouring rain. Soon, she ran into Zhou Wei, and they both found shelter in a nearby restaurant. This place was familiar to Zhou Wei, and he eagerly showed Jing Jing how to enjoy a particular dish. Curious, Jing Jing asked about what had happened earlier. At the same time, Xu talked to Gao Zhan and told him she couldn't dance for a while. As Zhou Wei shared the story with Jing Jing, she started to understand why Gao Zhan was so close to Xu. Later, when it was time to pay the bill, King noticed something surprising. There was gold dust on the receipt along with Jing Jing's letter. But he decided to keep this discovery to himself for now and didn't tell Jing Jing about it just yet. Later, back at his home, Zhou Wei looked through the photos from that day, starting to get a faint idea about who might be behind the letter he found on his desk. Xu messaged him and he responded, telling her he was okay. Her goodnight message made him smile. The next day at school, Zhou Wei decided to take away a mirror that Jing Jing had, hoping it would prevent her from seeing how close Gou Zhan and Xu were, sparing her more heartache. Then he shared a new clue about the letter incident, the strange presence of gold dust in it, suggesting that the cheerleaders might be involved. Zhou Wei showed the photos but left out Xu, not wanting to make her suspicious. However, Jing Jing cleverly figured out that Xu played a central role. In her eyes, Xu had always overshadowed her since childhood, leading to a long-standing rivalry and tension between them. From Jing Jing's point of view, Xu had always been a source of irritation for her since they were kids, and this situation didn't seem any different. But Zhou Wei had a different opinion. He thought Xu was a good person. During their conversation, Jing Jing suddenly realized that Zhou Wei had feelings for Xu. Although Zhou Wei reluctantly admitted it, he argued that it was because Xu looked a lot like an online friend of his. Together, they secretly observed Gou Zan and Xu, hoping to confirm that their relationship was purely friendly. However, they almost blew their cover and came close to getting caught. Zhou Wei tried to reason with Jing Jing, pointing out that it didn't make sense for Xu to sabotage her like this. Jing Jing's response, though, was straightforward. She just wanted to annoy Xu. During the night, Zhou Wei delved into the depths of the social network, searching for clues. He focused on one cheerleader, Lai Ho Ya, who had something valuable on her profile, a video from the day of the match. In that video, Along with the other cheerleaders, they discovered Jing Jing's love letter. The next day, Jing Jing, determined to confront Wei Xu, one of the girls from the video, approached her. However, Jiu Wei advised caution, reminding her that they still lacked solid evidence. His plan was to have a conversation with Wei Xu instead. Initially, Jing Jing was ready to express her anger, but Jiu Wei stepped in, asking Wei Xu for the complete video she had uploaded online. Meanwhile, Gou Zhan approached Jing Jing to apologize. He offered to become the club president right away as a peace offering. However, Jing Jing declined his sympathy and told him that she had decided to disband the club due to a lack of members. She asked Gou Zhan to forget about the bat. Zhou Wei joined Jing Jing, and they discussed the unfolding events. A little later, they received the full video from Wei Xu. As they watched it, they noticed Xu's attempts to convey that their actions were wrong. She even faced pressure to reveal the recipient of the love letter. Zhou Wei desperately tries to stop Jing Jing from watching the video, but he can't, 
and she storms off to confront Wei Su in anger. Jing Jing demands an explanation for their actions, leaving Xu puzzled about how they got the video. Xu maintains that there's no solid evidence pointing to her as the one who placed the letter on Zhao Wei's seat. Zhao Wei's only wish is for Xu to apologize sincerely, but initially, she refuses. However, under mounting pressure and the whispers around her, she reluctantly offers a somewhat insincere apology before leaving. Later in the evening, Jing Jing and Zhao Wei share a meal and chat casually. Jing Jing expresses her concerns about her reputation and the constant comparisons with Xu. Zhao Wei comforts her by holding her hands and reminds her that she's the protagonist of her own life. He encourages her not to worry about what others say and to embrace her uniqueness. This heartwarming conversation prompts Jing Jing to take a photo of Zhao Wei. After some editing to make him look slimmer, Zhao Wei is pleasantly surprised and asks for the picture right away for his profile. Jing Jing also expresses her concern for his health, and together, they decide to form an alliance. Zhao Wei will help Jing Jing with her studies, and she will assist him in becoming healthier. It's a pact to become better versions of themselves. The next day, they kick off their partnership in earnest. Zhao Wei dives into a discussion about Jing Jing's academic struggles, especially in math. She blames her problems on her genes, mentioning that her parents also have trouble with math. However, Zhao Wei disagrees and firmly tells Jing Jing not to copy homework anymore. Turning to Zhao Wei's own goals, Jing Jing notices his weight at 220 pounds. Zhao Wei, in his defense, blames his genetics for his weight. Nevertheless, he decides to shed some pounds initially aiming for a 66-pound reduction, but later settling on a more realistic 44-pound goal. Jing Jing takes charge of creating a strict diet plan for Zhao Wei. Although he reluctantly agrees, he can't resist the temptation of a piece of meat that he doesn't want to go to waste. Jing Jing firmly stops him from indulging, but their conversation is interrupted when Xu approaches Jing Jing. Xu takes her food and leaves, allowing Zhao Wei to sneakily enjoy the meat. Xu approaches Jing Jing with the intention of apologizing and explains that her earlier actions were due to pressure. However, Jing Jing remains steadfast in her decision not to forgive Xu and leaves without listening to the apology. From Xu's point of view, it's clear that Jing Jing has treated her badly and looked down on her since they were kids. Shortly after, Zhao Wei approaches Xu, and she apologizes to him. Zhao Wei graciously accepts her apology, wearing a friendly smile and acknowledging that everyone makes mistakes. Starting the next day and continuing after, Jing Jing assigns a tough exercise routine for Zhao Wei, along with a heart rate monitor bracelet. Zhao Wei's first task is to complete 500 rope jumps, which is quite challenging. However, Jing Jing encourages him throughout the process. At school, Zhao Wei returns the favor by helping Jing Jing with her studies. He gives her a workbook to complete in just 30 minutes. Their mutual support strengthens their bond. Later, as Zhao Wei gets ready for his exercise routine, he encounters his father, who notices that he's doing all of this for a girl. His father offers him a pair of shoes sent by his mother, but Zhao Wei firmly refuses, wanting no connection with her. When he reaches the park, instead of training, Zhao Wei gets engrossed in a chess game with a group of elderly men. To avoid suspicion, he lends his heart rate bracelet to one of them. However, Jing Jing notices unusual and slow readings from the bracelet and confronts Zhao Wei insisting on resuming her training. So the moral of the story is sometimes, the path to true friendship involves chasing basketballs, getting stuck with glue, and eating less meat. Just remember, it's the journey that counts, not the calories.